Good morning, girls. In the previous lesson on assimilation, part one, we have seen the meaning of assimilation and also uh, the functions of liver. Okay, in today's lesson, we are actually going to look at what happens to the substances that is uh, absorbed from the villus, what actually happens to them in the liver and also in the cells. So we are going to look at specifically three items or three substances, which is uh, which are amino acids, glucose, and also uh, lipids. Okay, first of all, let's look at what happens to the substances, uh, amino acids and glucose. Okay, we look at the diagram here, you will be able to see that now this is the small intestine. This is a small intestine. And here you will have velus. Okay, not drawn here. So the velus will absorb these substances, glucose and uh, amino acids. This is through the blood capillaries in the velus, and they converge into a vein called the hepatic portal vein. And as you learned earlier in the previous lesson, the first place that the, the these substances arrive they will be at the liver. So the hepatic, hepatic portal vein transports absorbed substances from the blood capillaries in the venous to the liver. Okay, now what happen, what has, what's going to happen to the substances here? Let's look at number one. Okay, what happens to amino acids? The liver will synthesize plasma protein and enzymes from the amino acids. Okay, now what is the meaning of synthesize? This means makes or produces. So you know that amino acid is the basic uh, building block of life. It's also the basic units of a lot of structural components in the cells. So you need amino acids to make plasma protein and also enzymes and antibodies and hormones and so on. What happens to the excess amino acids which are not utilized by the body? Okay, so the excess amino acids which are not utilized, they will not be stored in the body, but it will be broken down in a process called deamination, whereby urea will be formed. Okay, so what actually happens here is this molecule of amino acids will undergo a process whereby the amino group of the molecule will be taken out, and this amino group will uh, convert will be converted into urea. And this will be brought in the bloodstream to the kidney to be expelled in the urine. And the remaining part, the remaining part of the uh, amino acid, for example, this is the amino acid molecule, all right? So a small one part of it is the amino group. This will be the, this will be converted into urea. And the, the other part, all right, the remaining part of the amino, uh, of the amino acid, here will be used to be uh, converted into glucose. So, so this remaining part, okay, it will be converted into glucose and this is used to produce energy in cellular respiration. So this is useful. This part here is useful. We will not excrete that. We only excrete the amino group and that would form urea that will be excreted in the urine. Okay, let's look at what happens to glucose. As you learned earlier, glucose is the a major substance which is used for cellular respiration to produce energy. So glucose in the liver, glucose that arrives in the liver, right, is used for cellular respiration. And whatever that is not used, that means the excess. Sometimes you will have too much sugar in the blood. It is not utilized all at one go at the same time. So what happens is the excess glucose will be converted into glycogen and it will be stored in the liver and also cells. Now, why do we need to convert this into glycogen? Why can't we just keep the glucose in the form of glucose? Okay, now the, the reason here is because glucose is soluble. Glucose is soluble in uh, body liquids. That means in the, in the plasma component of the blood. And, but glycogen is insoluble. So if you have a lot of sugar in the glucose in the soluble form, it is going to affect the osmotic pressure. Okay, that would cause a lot of the water from the cell to diffuse out of the cell into the blood, into the blood plasma and your cells will be dehydrated. So that's why we need to convert your glucose into insoluble form, which is called glycogen 
so that it will not draw out the water from the body cells. Okay, and how do we do this conversion from glucose into glycogen? We need the hormone called insulin. We need a hormone called insulin. Okay, so this, one ha this is what happens when you have too much of sugar in your blood. It is not stored in as glucose form, but it will be converted by insulin into glycogen to be stored in the liver and also body cells. All right. Okay, now when your body needs sugar and you have exhausted your supply of glucose in the blood plasma, what happens is your body needs sugar and you're not eating yet. So the body will try to convert back your glycogen, which is actually stored food, into glucose to be utilized by your body cells. And this conversion is aided by the hormone called glucagon. So glucagon helps the conversion of glyco uh, glycogen into glucose. Okay, so they are both hormones. So insulin is a hormone, so it's glycogen. And uh, sorry, glucagon. And please do not mix up your glycogen with your glucagon. Okay, glucagon is a hormone. Okay, but glycogen is the substrate. It's a substance that can be uh, oxidized to produce energy. And uh, when the storage of glycogen is uh, comes to a maximum, that means there is actually a maximum amount of uh, glycogen that you can store in your body. So if you have still have excess glucose, uh, this excess glucose will be converted into fats. And fat is actually, uh, you can store fats in uh, limitless, okay? You will see a lot of people who are obese, you have a lot of storage of fat in the body. But for glycogen, there is a limit to how much you can store the glycogen in your body. So when you have excess, you will convert that into fat. And this is limitless, okay? You have can have limitless amount of fat in your body. Okay, so here, you see the diagram? All right, so um, this hepatic portal vein will transport glucose and amino acids, acid, and excess glycogen is stored in the form of, uh, uh, sorry, glucose is stored in the form of glycogen, and amino acids, excess amino acids will be, uh, under, will undergo the process called deamination, where urea is produced and it will be excreted in the kidneys. Okay, and then the other things, uh, the glucose, some of it will be used to produce energy in the process called cellular respiration. Amino acids will be used to produce plasma protein and enzymes, and of course used to make components of the cell called the protoplasms. And okay, and that is what happens. Now what happens to your lipid? Lipid, as you know, it goes through another channel. It doesn't pass into the blood capillaries of the villus, but it goes through the lacteal, the lacteal converges into a system called the lymphatic system and all these lymphatic vessels will converge into a large one called the thoracic duct we've seen that in the previous lesson thoracic duct and it pours back into the subclavian uh, vein okay the left subclavian vein in our body so let's look at what happens to yeah, what happens to these substances in the cells? What do the cells use these things for? So number one, amino acids, they are used to synthesize protoplasm. That protoplasm, the, the term of protoplasm includes your nucleus and the cytoplasm. And it's also used to repair damaged tissues. So they're also used to uh, synthesize hormones and enzymes and also antibodies. So basically it is used for synthesis of substances, is to make new substances in your body. For glucose, glucose is mainly used for oxidation. It is oxidized through cellular respiration, okay, with oxygen, of course, to release energy, which is used for various processes in our body. And what happens to the excess glucose, which is not utilized at that time, it will be converted into glycogen. And it's also used, this energy that is produced from uh, uh, cellular respiration is used for various uh, processes in the body, protein synthesis, cell division, and so on. Okay, for lipids, how do our cells uh, assimilate or use the lipids? Phospholipids, okay, lipids such as phospholipids and cholesterol, they built, they are made, they are used to make the plasma membrane. If you remember, you have your phospholipid bilayer in the plasma membrane. Excess fats are kept in adipose tissues and they are found stored underneath the skin. Yeah, and this is used as a food storage. So whenever you are 
perhaps uh, have not eaten for many days. So our body will start to metabolize, will start to break down your fat because your fat will be used to be, uh, will be oxidized to produce energy. Okay, and uh, so this is basically the third point here. Fat is oxidized to release energy when there's insufficient glucose, especially in famine, right? When you have uh, exhausted all your glucose, you also exhausted your glycogen storage. You, the last thing, uh, the next thing will be your fats. And if that fat is also exhausted, the last result will be your protein. And that is very, very hazardous to your health. Okay, so that's it. This is what uh, assimilation is all about in your liver and also your body cells. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Any questions, please ask me in the WhatsApp group.